Uh, we'll try to make it quick so we can continue walking through the Belgrade fortification and to discover more details about each and every period while we uh, walk. Okay, so uh, the first ones to realize how good strategical point this is were Romans, four Flavian legion of Romans. They came here and uh, saw the confluence of two rivers and hill on top of it. So it was perfect for fortification to defend yourself from barbarians. They did that and one of those barbarians were Slavic tribes which we actually are. We are Slavic um, people by heritage, actually. And uh, so uh, Roman fortification is actually still here. So if you can see these three windows, they were left open for you to see the Roman fortification from first centuries. It's all the way under this um, fortification. So you can see how everyone else later on built on top of that first uh, Roman fortification. They went away in 5th century when uh, Attila the Hun was running around this area. He crashed the Belgrade fortification and Romans didn't need this position anymore so they uh, pulled back. Uh, in 6th century Byzantines came here and uh, their empire Justinian he rebuilt the fortification and they stay here for quite a while. Uh, in 10th century uh, Hungarians came and they started fighting Byzantines about Belgrade fortification, about this perfect strategical point. In 12th century it's Hungarian, Byzantines went away, and in 13th century it's Serbian for the first time. Now it's interesting uh, that uh, it was not gained through a war or battle for Serbs, it was actually a wedding present. Our king married Hungarian princess and his father-in-law gave him Belgrade as a wedding present. Now, in 15th century, uh, it's still Serbian, and it's uh, a <coughs> Serbian capital city for the first time. They moved the capital city from uh, south, more north, because it was this was the most the northeast point of Serbia at the time, and uh, so the safest point. Uh, before, because Turks were capturing Serbia part by part, so they thought it's safer here. It really was, because they uh, defended Belgrade, uh, defended royalty and military from here for 70 years. They had help from Hungarians and um, they persisted for 70 years, so almost uh, f a whole uh, 15th century. Actually, only for a few years, Turks uh, did capture some parts of fortification. So they built this. This is Dungeon Gate or Zindan in Turkish. They had guards up there and dungeons underneath. So they were putting people in the dungeons directly if they look suspicious, if they walk around here. Well, we'll see the entrances to those dungeons when we walk through uh, Dungeon Gate. Anyway, in 1521, that's the year when Turks captured Belgrade uh, and they stayed here for quite a while. Uh, in, um, that's when Belgrade changed into Oriental City. Uh, I forgot to say just one thing, that tower, that watchtower and, and gate, they're original from 15th century, uh, from uh, when Belgrade became the Serbian capital city. Anyway, in 18th century, Austrians came and they started fighting Turks about Belgrade fortification. Uh, that's where all... Savela. Ya vamos a ir de zombies, ¿no? Sí. Decidido, para Halloween. Sí, sí, estoy grabando todo. Las dos cosas son altamente posibles. Porque no huele, pero se queda pegado. Ay, hey, mira. Aquí tenemos el color. Esta será la parte celta. Oh. Por aquí no aparece nada. Ja, 
the river. Well, that's this. That's that's the square yeah. observatory. So maybe this, here. This is the square observatory. The next yeah. one is. You have the yeah. drawing part of that. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> so we are basically here, and the thing you still have is this. That's the tower over there, the fearless tower, and you can see how this lower part was inhabited by people. It even had Catholic church in 15th century crazy and there was gate here it's still there so we'll see it and this is where the royal castle was which blew in powder explosion in 17th century so we will just see the the model of how it looked like okay so there is no harbor anymore but what's interesting about this uh, tower it's called fearless tower uh, and it was used as a harbor object uh, later on in Turkish time so they had um, Team that was going from the tower to that green area, which is called Big War Island, and they would pull the chain whenever enemy ships are coming. Uh, enemy ships hit the chain and go down. So they say that part of the island is formed on, on shipwrecks from medieval. Actually, a uh, Big War Island uh, is one part is uh, bird sanctuary. On the other side is a sandy beach where you can swim in Danube during the summer. Now to explain the rivers, you have Sava River coming from here, and Danube comes from over there, and Danube splits into two halves. Goes from left and right. This is the complex here, and when you look across uh, Big War Island, you can see Zem, the tower over there. It's called Millennium Tower. It was showing the corner of Hungary at the time in 19th century millennium tower they were celebrating one millennium of their existence now serbia is 200 kilometers more north that's the consequence of first world war that's when we gained more territory uh, now zemun was another city separate from Belgrade, developing separately uh, and uh, they merged after second world war through new belgrade all the concrete buildings that you can see here that's new belgrade that all was built after second world war because that's when Belgrade became the capital city of a communist country, which was uh, developing really fast. We? Tampoco no habla. Pues estoy perfectamente. So when you go to Paris, you go and see Eiffel Tower. When you go to Berlin, you go and see Brandenburg Gate, uh, uh, London Big Ben. What did you come to see here? What's the symbol of Belgrade? What's that big monumental building that symbolizes the whole city? The horse. The horse? No. The naked guy, yeah, the naked guy, no big building to symbolize called city, just the naked guy here. They say it's perfect uh, symbol when you're proclaimed the best party city according to Lonely Planet, which we are for this year. Uh, but we didn't put uh, Victor Kobenik in Serbian to exhibit our party life. Uh, he was ordered to be made uh, at the end of Balkan Wars, which took place before the First World War. They were action of Balkan countries to push the Turks away from Balkan Peninsula and then the second Balkan War oh, to decide how to divide the, the space you know, in between them. So uh, he was made, uh, but... Uh United Muslim countries basically which wanted to go through whole Europe. So this guy uh, won uh, Greece for them, uh, Damat Ali Pasha, and then they sent him here to attack, to go further from here through Europe, to go all the way to Vienna. But actually he died in a battle only to uh, 80 kilometers from Belgrade. So this was the last Turkish um, 
fortification nearby, so they dragged him back here, and this is his grave. And actually, it's interesting story how he um, died in that battle because he had 600,000 soldiers, and Austrians had 200,000 soldiers. So it was very clear that he's going to sweep the floor. With They captured the fortification really well from that side because it's flat area. If Turks attack them, it's really easy for them. Uh, so they made one gate, then a trench, another gate, then a trench, then two gates from left and right. Uh, but the thing was, when they were changing power, Turks were always changing something. So, for example, this was Austrian main gate, but Turks moved it only a few meters away. I don't know, was it a tactic to trick the enemy or what? Or just to show, oh, we are doing something here, we are changing something. So they sealed this gate. You will see from the other side how it's sealed. They made a new gate and they made a clock tower, which is typical for Turkey, but this tower doesn't look that typical Turkish. That's because they captured Austrian architect. And he said, I want to continue working. I'm an artist, I want to work, I don't care for who I work. He continued working and they said, you have to make a uh, clock tower, that's typical Turkish. He said, okay, and made it in Venetian style, which is one of Austrian style. So that's why you have a lot of mixture of styles in this next area, which we are going through. Uh, it yeah. Okay. Sí. Okay. 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 enorme. Me está gustando más de lo que pensaba, Belgrado. Ya no nos va a quedar nada para hoy. Sí, todavía queda. Sí, tranquila, Lidia, tranquila. Esta noche jugamos el tren, ¿no? No, pero yo... Tiene que subir la gente y todo. Oh, yeah. 